and you get free stuff. So why not call us up, 319-354-0800. So we'll get Big Voice Guy out here for the amazing pet story of the week. It's time for the amazing pet almost story like, of the week. What's that? It's almost like we have our own little thing that we do on this show. And somebody's watching right now. <laughs> yeah, it's throwing you off. It's throwing me I off. I can still right. kick big voice guy here. Oh. <laughs> big voice guy. He's a jerk. Is a jerk. He's a jerk. And when he comes in here, he he's a mean. We gotta off. find. <laughs> we gotta find another big voice guy. All right. I so the very young right now. The amazing pet story of the week is a story that you have likely heard, but I thought it was perfect. And we haven't done it. I think we did this one last year at some point, but it's certainly worth repeating. It's the story of Hawkeye. He is a German shepherd, and you may remember there was a lot of news coverage on this. It actually went worldwide, uh, and it was the story of the dog. He was a he was the dog of Officer John Tummelson, a, a Navy SEAL, a fallen Navy SEAL that passed away in in the line of duty. And what happened at the funeral it, it was was unreal. It was at the the casket was up in front of the church, and the cousin of John Tumulson was taping this when the dog went up and would not leave the side of John Tumulson. And so there's a quote here that says that Hawkeye was loyal to his. Uh, he was his loyal son. To say that he was an amazing man doesn't do him justice. The loss of John to his family, military family, and friends is immeasurable. I hadn't planned on taking any pictures other than with the family. However, from my seat at the funeral, I felt compelled to take at least this photo of Hawkeye. And then they taped the video, and it's apparent he just would not leave the side of the casket. And it was he, he knew that his, uh, his, his owner had passed away. And that was so heartfelt, the story uh, just really captured the nation just to see a dog and you know there's scientists and some argue that the that dogs don't have any personalities or any features <laughs> they they don't get happy they're just uh, responding to the food that your owner gives them and so there's some of that that is out there but um i'm sure as a military a former military member this this is a, a story that you've you've likely heard this story before right yeah i've, I've heard that before yes. yeah it's, it's a really good story. It is. And and um, so that's our amazing pet story of the week. Hawkeye deserves recognition. There's a statue from what I heard up in, I think it was Rockford, Iowa. They put together a statue of Hawkeye. Oh. Uh, and so, I didn't um, know that. yeah, cool. it just, it's, um, again, one of those stories that just, you can't believe it until you, you saw it on tape and you just would not leave the casket side. So that's our amazing pet story of the week. So uh, if you are a German Shepherd owner and you would like to call us up, we would love to have you call 319-354-0800 is the phone number. 319-354-0800. If you call us up, just give us the name of your dog. We will set you up with a free bag of treats. We just like to know a little bit about your dog if it is a, a, a good, you know, we've talked about the police aspect. Ron, I'd like for you to just give us a little history on the German Shepherd if you could. Okay. Do you have what? What do you know, uh, Officer Falcon, about the history of the German Shepherd? Mainly what everyone else kind of knows about it. <laughs> give, um, give me your. Oh, we always uh, start off with just a uh, some personal, uh, you know, opinions and thoughts. You know, what do you think of the breed? What do you think of the breed from? Uh, you know, gosh, is that the right breed for me? What What should somebody consider when considering the German Shepherd? When considering uh, the German Shepherd, I would consider uh, it's a very loyal dog. I mean, beyond loyal. I've So th that right there would be uh, the number one key there, um, the upkeep on them. It's not as bad as everyone thinks. Yes, it's a long hair dog, and there is a lot of hair. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, what I'm learning with uh, Racker is it's, it's not as bad, you know, and they love to be brushed, love to be brushed, you know. So um, they can get pretty large so they're not necessarily a lap dog racker sometimes thinks he's a lap dog but i love when big dogs do that oh yeah i had a weimariner and he used to just jump up on my lap <laughs> i mean the big 80 pound dog and he'd just be like on my mm -hmm. face and i'm just like dude get away <laughs> but uh, german shepherds i'm glad you mentioned the hair because that's one of the things that i know people think of right away including myself is oh man they probably leave hair all over did it get worse in the summer did you notice they were shedding was shedding more in the summer um, I, I'm, I'm kind of still gathering that information. I've only had Racker since Thanksgiving. So, so you haven't even made it a full not, calendar yeah, year. Not yet. even a full year yet. But he's already loyal to you, huh? Oh, beyond loyal. I mean, when I, uh, when I go away and I've been gone for a day or two, uh -huh. you know, when I come back, he lets out the biggest 
squeal. It's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, he's here, he's here, he's here. <laughs> Come get me, please, he's here. You know, I mean, that's awesome. That's a great feeling, and and a, it sounds like a great dog there too, Racker. How old is Racker, by the way? Racker's two years old. Oh, so a little pup then still. He's young. We're gonna, I'm gonna have him for a long time. Yeah. All right, and what could you tell us, Ron? Well, about, I want you to, you you pointed out the shedding aspect. So what should you have? The in, Furminator. Do you have one of those at home? We do. We yeah. have a Furminator. Yeah, the thing would be unbelievable for this shed. It definitely is a shedding dog, and so if you're not into the shedding aspect and you hate shedding, okay. German Shepherd's probably not the right dog for you. Um, but with the Furminator, how often, with the Furminator, what I find with at my own home with my own shedding, it's a cat. Um, if I don't use it, yep, shedding comes back. If I do use it, wow, it's it's really reduced. Is that what you're finding at home as well with, with Racker? At home, I'm finding it in my car. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's he's, where most of the time is. He's in the car is. for uh, eight hours, you know, with me while, while we're working. And there's been days where I open up the, uh, I'll let my windows down, and there's just hair flying everywhere in my soda. And <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's oh, yeah. everywhere. You know? And so how often do you use that Furminator? Uh, I use it probably about once a month now. Okay. And the, I know the, the product says use it once a week, mm -hmm. like a five, 10 minute treatment once a week, you're going to get 92% of, they, I mean, they got it down to, I, I want to know how did they get 92% yeah. uh, out of it, but they, yeah, 92% of the shedding is gone. And so using it once a week probably would help out even more. It'd be a little less hair in the pop. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I fixed that you know, with the, the Furminator and uh, I, I made the mistake once, actually twice, where I would give him a bath and we're, we're kind of strapped for time. So I threw him in the car. And he's a little bit wet still. And he's a little wet. Oh, and and yeah. I didn't brush all the hair that I just got finished. Oh, know. right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it becomes a little uh, hairy. And, oh. and, and what about like day to day? Because I'm thinking to myself, you, when you mentioned eight hours with you in the car, do you bring like a water bowl with you or how do, do you feed them when you're on the road with them or how does that work? Um, I don't feed them. Okay. Um, that's, uh, I had another shepherd before him uh -huh. and she passed because of bloat. Mm. Oh, so I'm, oh, I did read about that. I wasn't <laughs> sure what that was talking about. Yes, okay. yeah, she passed uh, in training. She was also an uh, Iowa City Police canine. Canine, yeah. And um, be because of that, I'm a little bit more cautious, cautious yeah. when sure. it comes to sure. feeding. So, um, but he has a permanent water bowl in the back of the car, and the dog loves his water. Uh -huh. I mean, if I if I filled it, he'll he'll empty it really you know really? so i have to kind of monitor <laughs> and in this summer there's been some hot ones too oh my so. gosh <laughs> he's got that coat on him yes he gets thirsty i yes. bet no and doubt he, is he is he ball trained where the ball is is his little thing yes okay so yeah is yes. so in the back seat does he always have his ball in his mouth no not always okay not always there's sometimes i i i'll let him play with it like um when um when we found the gun or when we uh, did our track for the, uh, we, we tracked the Gumby's robbery. We had an armed robbery at Gumby's mm -hmm. and this was our first week on, you know, and I knew what I was doing, but you know, you still always have it in the back of your mind, like, Oh boy, this is my first one, you know? And when we did that, you know, I, and they told me, yeah, he, they were upstairs. I'm like, Nice. Oh, man. Good I mean, boy. <laughs> I, I almost went out and bought him brand new tennis balls. Here, take it, buddy. You know, it's exciting. <laughs> Here's a like, like supply brand new. And new before, one every day. And, and again, Ron's going to tell us a little bit about the history, and I'm curious to learn, you know, a little bit more on the background of him. But but uh, this day-to-day -day stuff has got me really interested. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you have the, okay, so you have the dog with you uh, on a daily basis. As you said, you do bring him home with you. And so the dog is essentially part of the department when 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 you got involved in the department did you apply for a canine position to have a canine dog or is that assigned to you after you're a member of the police department how does that work um when i first got there at the police department there was an opening for the canine okay. but i only i was still on um fto so I hadn't been there for a year, so I didn't qualify for it anyway. They they kind of want to make sure that you are a reliable person. Therefore, I mean, they don't you don't want to give a dog to a person that's going to leave in a year. Right, right, because you want to build that bond, right? So um, after um, one of our 
canine officers left the police department and another one was up to retire, um, there was an opening and I applied for it. Okay. So that's how it were. But, but if you were to go, not you, but if a, a, an off, a, a officer from another police department wanted to become a canine unit, uh, essentially there has to be an opening at that department. And then you have to be properly trained into that, right? I mean, because you, you obviously weren't familiar with what a canine officer does, right? At that point? Yes and no. Okay. Um, I've been training dogs for seven years. So okay. I, I've done uh, Schulzen work, and that's the uh, that's that's the protection work, and it's actually started off as a uh, prote- protection trial for the German shepherds. Okay, you know, so um, it's I, I've been doing that for quite a while. So I kind of knew about the working aspect of the dogs, and I worked with our canine unit that we had before me, and so I kind of knew sure enough. But now that I'm in it. I realized I didn't know everything. <laughs> you see, right, you right. seem happy too. You seem like you like what you do. I love so, it. That's good. That's good. It. All right. Well, Ron, uh, you've got this information. And so tell us a little bit about the history of the German Shepherd. Yeah, the AKC has a lot of what we're talking about here. They really focus in on the fearless and strong and muscular. And they even get into uh, one of the best uh, dogs to get for defending. Um, there's a lot of dogs that will alert you, you know, through a bark or, or whatever, something's going wrong or whatever. But mm-hmm. the small dogs obviously are not capable of defending. Uh, the German Shepherd they bring out as, wow, this guy's one of the top. And that's why we have it in the, the police force and, and all that. But even in this conversation that we've had um, with Officer Falcon about Racker, we're also hearing when, when they're at home, Really, really friendly, really, you know, sociable, loves the family, got two young kids. Um, Those aspects are obviously there and are trainable. Um, Obviously, Racker is a very specialized uh, trained dog. Um, And so it's a dog that if you, uh, for just a normal person out on the road like myself, I would never recommend uh, training your dog to attack or anything like that. That's a really, that, that's a tough situation to put a dog into um, for just a normal Joe on the street type thing. And so I would say, hey, let's socialize this dog. And you're, you're hearing how social they can be. And the way to bring a German Shepherd um, into a more social scene is, is um, uh, exposing them to a lot of different people and a lot of different dogs in a friendly manner so that you're in control when they're being exposed, nothing bad happens. And so now that dog will become very social and won't be on the attack and, and all that kind of stuff in future. So AKC goes into that quite uh, a bit. Um, the dog came into, really became a, a breed in, with the AKC and a lot of people were getting interested just Back at, what, 1899 in Germany is when it really started um, um, becoming very popular. Now, I'm going to try to do this. The the person that is is uh, labeled as the person who, you know, is the founder of the German Shepherd mm. is Captain Max von Stefanitz. And I think I got almost correct on that one. Um, but it came from herding and farm dogs. That's where a lot of the mixes that make up the German Shepherd today come from. And that's where, hmm. um, how it got to where it's at. So it's, uh, uh, it, it's got a nice history to it as far as where it's coming from and all that kind of stuff. The rest of it, they just keep on going into obedience, uh, uh, in, in police type training and stuff like that. So, um, my personal feeling is, is, is back on what Racker is like at home. Um, we have counselors in our store that have German Shepherds at home and love the breed. And they bring the breed into our store to do even more socialization and everything. And so as they're growing up, especially if you start from a puppy, they're a real nice social dog. There, there are plenty of beautiful, very sociable German Shepherds out there. That's Ron Salisbury with Petland of Iowa City. We're joined today by Officer Brandon Falcon with the Iowa City Police Department. I'm Jay Caper. This is the Positively Petland Show. And again, uh, phone lines are open, so if you'd like to call, we'd love to hear about your German Shepherd. Does it have these types of characteristics? Is your dog friendly? Is it loyal? Uh, call us up. If you have a German Shepherd especially, that's what we're looking for today. It's our breed of the week, 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. And if you do call, you'll get a free bag of Neutro dog treats and a free bag of 
of Nutro Dog Food just for calling the program. So it's that easy. Call us up, give us the name of your dog, and tell us a little bit about your dog. We'd love to hear about it. 319-354-0800. 319-354-0800. And, Brandon, we were talking, uh, Ron was just talking about the, the, you know, how people could use them for protection. And, and, and my guess is that people like, uh, cause I know from having a Weimariner when he was, he would come into the, uh, when a pizza guy would come, like I, there were some guys who were pretty scared of the dog just cause he's big. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing that you'll see that too. People like may not think of him as being the friendliest dog. Uh, well, a lot of people think that because once it comes to my car, Racker, it sounds like he's, he's a huge wolf. Yeah. He's humongous. Car, yeah. You know, but He's he's not, he's not a mean dog. Yeah, that's great. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Good morning. You're on the Positive Pellet Show. What's your name? It's Tim. What, Tim? Yes. All right, Tim, you have a German Shepherd? Yes, I have a, a year-and-a-half-old female red sable German Shepherd. She's uh, 16 generations. Her mother's from Czechoslovakia. Her father's from Germany. And uh, she isn't, the, you know, the squat rear end type. She's long, um large bone German, European type German Shepherd. And um, one behavior I have with her, she's very, very loyal, you know, no doubt about that, very athletic. Yes, um, she's very defensive. And when she's inside the car, you know, sticking her head out you know, at the window, people are always asking her, you know, if they can pet her. And um, just as they start to approach her, she'll start going into a park, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and the people kind of understand it as, you know, she's just been in the car, but I need to break her of that so she can, uh, you know, accept people more, uh, be more social and something like that. So what were your advice there? I've got some ideas, but here we've got uh, Brandon on the air here. I would love to hear. Do you have any thoughts on that? As far as your training, I know you've been in training a lot. Is, is it's, He's talking about socializing and preventing that initial bark. Uh, when something is happening around them, in this case, it's in a car and somebody's approaching. Do you ha- um, do you have any techniques that you would know of? Um, there's a a couple. Uh, what you what I would try to do is correct correct it before it happens. So in training, we put our dogs in situations where they know they can win. We don't put we don't train our dog to lose because if our dog loses in training, then they did not learn anything. Right. So if you were to correct the correct the barking before it happens, so if you were to have people walk up to your car and you already have your dog in a nice calm manner, start talking to the people as they're walking up to the car. Therefore, your dog goes, okay, well, dad thinks he's okay, so I, I should be okay, you know. And if right. repetition, repetition, and you know that's that's one of the ways I would suggest. So anticipate the behavior and then act on it before, beforehand. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. Okay. Now I had, I had her brother uh, from uh, two litters before, and he's now in police service. He was accepted into training. And um, I'm, I don't plan on doing any special training with her. She's more of a family pet, but um, um, very athletic. As you know, German Shepherds need their exercise. So besides playing chase the tennis ball about 20 minutes a day and going for walks, do you have any other types of exercises or any type of skill training that you do, you know, to suggest, you know, that would uh, fit her appetite? Um, no, that, that pretty, that pretty much would do it. Uh, if you have a chuck it, those are great. That's what I was going to bring out is the <laughs> chuck it. The chuck it uh, allows you to throw the ball a lot farther because it has leverage to it and getting yeah. that out there. Do you have one of those? Well, I use uh, these rubber balls about the size of a baseball. And because uh, tennis balls, all she does is destroy those after about five minutes. <laughs> I, think but, calm. You know, I use, Yeah, I use these rubber balls. And then I use a racquetball racket. And, um, oh, oh whack it. Yeah, there you go. And what I'll do uh, is uh, we'll do about 10, 15 minutes of jumping, but sprint work where I stand in one spot in the field and hit the ball one way. She goes, runs, and chases it, breaks the patch, and then just before she gets to me, she drops it, and then I hit the ball the other way, so she continues her sprint. <laughs> Keep them running. <laughs> yeah, and she just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I get the sprint, you know, worked out there, and then I let her go chase squirrels. Nice. You know? <laughs> well, your name was Tim, right? Yeah. All right, Tim, you've got a free bag of treats and a free bag of neutral dog food, too, at the uh, Petland of Iowa City store for you in your name, okay? Okay. 
Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank and you. Then, also, thank Tim, uh, the if you're looking for a stronger ball, Chuckett and Kong both have a really strong ball uh, that they've rated as four strong chores. And then if you wanted some more ideas on how to prevent that barking, uh, I can go through those with you at the store. But it's a similar technique as what we what we talked on here, but a little some some different ideas as well. That was great. And see, that was a great uh, – that's exactly what we're looking for with callers calling the show to bring in personal experience, maybe ask some questions to help out other listeners. And uh, if you have a German Shepherd, you still have time, 319-354-0800. 319-354-0800 is the phone number. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us the name of your dog and a little bit about your dog, and uh, it's that easy. You get a free bag of Nutro dog treats and Nutro – a dog food and, and I actually that's the, that just reminded me I we were dog sitting for my wife's aunt and uncle and they had two German shepherds and they had Kongs uh, right and they had a huge backyard and we watched them for about four days in a row and I think by the fourth day my arm you know <laughs> I was just <laughs> yeah. like I mean you talk about a dog that doesn't get tired very fast I mean I'd be throwing and after a while like a, a good 40 minutes or so I'm like all right you guys done yet or <laughs> what and they just kept running and running and running so lots of energy in those Yeah, things. and it, which is a good point. If you're considering the German Shepherd, you just heard the amount of running that you would need to do in order to keep this guy going. They love it. Record loves running too, right, I assume? I can't get him to stop. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get him to stop. Do yeah, you have a chuck it too? Out. I do have a chuck it. Okay. And a chuck it for listeners that were uh, caught part of that was essentially it's a device like it, it actually lets you throw it further. Right? Yeah, it, it uses like leverage and yeah, picture you know the uh, a pole that holds a uh, a ball just right so that when you do just the natural throwing uh, throw, it goes it releases way farther, and then the leverage then throws it even further than you can. So for a German Shepherd or for any if you any of you listening have a breed of dog that just loves running, running, running. That'd be a good thing to get. To yeah, Vigila is going to go home today from our store, which is a large breed that runs Those are beautiful unbelievably. Dogs, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's what we're going to focus uh, with her on there. Uh, actually, she's from the military as well. I don't think she wants it for military purpose, right, right. but she's uh, having fun with but, it. That way. Well, and the Vizsla is a sister to the dog that I had, the Weimariner. They yeah. actually look kind of similar. The Vizsla is a little smaller, though. Yeah, Usually, like smaller. Red, reddish, too. Yeah, it yeah. has that red coat. But that well, the Weims are the grayish, just uh, beautiful dogs, too, yeah. Weimariners. And today, the breed is the German Shepherd. We're talking about Racker. We're talking to Officer Brandon Falcon from the Iowa City Police Department. He told us earlier in the show, if you're just tuning in, about a story just recently. How how recent was that? That armed robbery that uh, Racker got to, got to work on about a week ago. A week ago. So, and, and you've had you've been with uh, Racker for since last Thanksgiving. So it's been not even a full year, um, but some stories to to already notch on the uh, the pole there. Yeah, he, he's done a, a, a great job so far, huh? We've had a really good first year really good really, really good and you and as you alluded to earlier on the show you never really know what to expect and, and when you have a new dog especially and, and now you have a, a a dog that's been successful besides that story is there another story you could tell us could you go into the accuracy of yeah the yeah dog? just yeah. a quick how accurate is racker in what he does and how do you know that um well i as i mentioned earlier we, we uh all us Johnson County guys and a couple of Lynn County and uh, other different counties, we get together and we train. We do it twice a month. And in training, that's where we can figure out our dog's accuracy. We have a program that we put the amount of hides, which would be the narcotics that we hide in the vehicle or a room. And then we do blank cars that obviously they don't have anything in them. And then you have... Um, you put those inside this program and it lets you tally up the percent of your dog's accuracy. Uh, right now, I believe Racker's running right around uh, 97%. Yeah, that's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's huge accolades to you. Uh, that's You're the one that's helping Racker through all that. And then uh, that accuracy is directly linked to you as well. Somebody else taking Racker doesn't get that same accuracy. It's you working with your dog and understanding things and stuff. So. I'm guessing you actually have to use real narcotics for these trainings, right? Yes. Okay, because, I mean, if it's fake, you're not going to get the same, you know, I guess, scent and, and everything. You want it to be the real stuff. Well, we train on what we find. So, right. I mean, we don't, we don't want to train on just an odor of something out of nowhere. We want to train with what we're actually finding out there. So um, 
there's a process you go through with uh, the DEA's, DEA office, mm. and it's, it's a long process. And then they actually provide training material for us to use for our dogs. And if the chase part of it too, you, you know, I've seen. I think a lot of people have seen the videos where the the guy who's being chased, his eyes turn, you know, into these wide eyes when he sees the dog coming, you know, and and then they put their hand. A lot of times, put their hands up. I don't want to be bit. So the the dog. The, I'm guessing that's like last case command is to to get to to clamp and hold them. Right? Is is that? I mean, how does that work when you're chasing somebody down? The dog leads the way and chases them through the yards, or how does that work? Um. It depends on the scenario, the situation. What, what, we're, what we're dealing with. Uh-huh. Um, I've never been in a chase where I've actually had to use him. So um, the dog, I, I don't deploy racker on every call I go on. You know, there's calls where if, the, you know, if it's not a dog call, I don't bring him out. Because once I bring him out, I'm married to him. There's, I can't do anything else. I can't handcuff people. I can't go interview. I can't do any of that stuff. I become, I mean, Racker and I, technically, we become the dog (laughs) right right when he's out. You know, so a lot of the calls, I kind of leave him in the car so we can figure out what we're dealing with and um, judge if it's worth me even bringing him out. Okay. Wow. Well, it's it's cool. I've learned a lot about the the K9 units. We have a few more minutes if anyone else wants to call in with their story about their German Shepherd or just tell us the name of the German Shepherd and a little bit about your breed, uh, what you like about the personality and you get a free bag of Nutro dog treats, a free bag of Nutro food. 319-354-0800 319-354-0800 Today we are joined by Officer Brandon Falcon. He's with the Iowa City Police Department. He's been telling us about his dog, Racker, which is a part German Shepherd, part Dutch, is that what you said? Yeah, part Dutch. And then, uh, Ron, um, you probably have a product you want to talk about too, right? I'm just having too much fun here. Um, I almost feel like going into a product, well, that's not all that much fun. Um, we only have a couple minutes, so we are to squeeze it in. <laughs> well, the, the, what we were going to look at today was a Lure 911 anti-lick paw spray. And this is just real briefly, it's a really cool product. If you have a, your dog that is suffering from allergies, whether it's uh, an allergen out in the yard or an allergen from the food or, or whatever, you, it doesn't even matter what it's from. And it's just licking it incessantly, whether it's the paw, whether it's, it's the leg with a joint, uh, anywhere, you can spray this product on there and it does two things. One, it soothes and helps um, alleviate some of that itch or, or irritant or whatever it is. And then it also has a bittering agent in it so that it, when the dog licks that area or cat, this can go on either one, then it will go, Ooh, man, that's nasty stuff. I don't want to do that again. And so they do, you will have to apply this product, um, at least on a daily basis. And if you have a really incessant, uh, as soon as you see them licking the, that paw again, that just means they, they've licked it off. So now reapply the product again. Um, like what we talked about training earlier today, it's uh, repetition. So the more you do it, the more they're going to go, oh, I remember last time I did that, I didn't like it because it tasted bad. So continue to, to, to use the product uh, all the way through. You know, If it's a healing process that you're trying to get through, then uh, that's, it's great for that. If it's like right now, uh, especially with rain coming and we just had a little bit of rain, um, your dog might have a little bit of allergy with the grass out there. So again, you might have to apply it through that allergen cycle so to keep them off of those paws. Um, if you're not sure if your dog is licking the paw incessantly, um, if you notice that the paw is like changing color to a reddish brownish color, that means if they're if you're not seeing it when they're not, when they're off on their own, they're licking their paws quite a bit, and this is a way to stop that incessant licking. So that's the product. What's, I a, to what's the name about. of it again? Allure 911 Anti Lick Paw Spray by Nature Vet, um, and I've posted that on our Facebook. Um, also, a link to their website so you can learn more about it, and you can find our Facebook by doing uh, going into the Facebook and search in Petland Iowa City. Uh, have, it'll come up, hit the like button, and then you'll see our my most recent post there. All right, great. Well, we're out of time for the show, but thanks to our guest, Officer Brandon Falcon with the Iowa City Police Department and his dog, Racker. Uh, thanks, uh, Brandon. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It was awesome. That yeah, was yeah, a lot of fun. We had a good time and uh, hopefully enjoyed listening. I just put a post up on Facebook that the podcast of this show will be available. So if you're maybe just getting in your car and you missed the show, it was a good show. We talked about 
uh, Officer Falcon's dog, Racker. We talked a lot about the breed, the German Shepherd in particular. And again, we had a lot of fun along the way, as we always do. So the, po the podcast will be up there later today. Check out our blog, too. Uh, there's a Positively Petland Show blog. We'll have pictures up there, too. And uh, that's about it for the show today. So, Ron, anything else you want to add as we wrap up the show? Just remind everybody, Petland of Iowa City, we're located across from the Sycamore Mall. Uh, our hours of operation, Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. And then on Sunday, noon until 6. If you, if you have questions, just give us a call. It's 319-351-9451. You can also look us up on the web, PetlandIowaCity.com. You can see all the puppies that we have in the store right now. We have a ton of large breeds right now. So if you're looking for that large breed dog, there are plenty of them out there for you. All right, let's see if this is a German Shepherd owner. I'm going to give him one last chance here. Good morning. You're on the Positive Petland Show. You have a German Shepherd? Yes, we do. Aha, uh -huh, you got in last go. second. What's your name? Diane Slaughter. All right, Diane. And what's your German Shepherd's name? Zoe. Zoe. What, how, how old? She's two years old. Two, and, and what kind of personality? Is she uh, very loyal? Is she energetic? She's loyal and a total lover. She just loves you to death. <laughs> yeah. She's very see, yeah, good protective and just really sweet. We just love her to death. Oh, good. Well, Zoe is going to be very happy because you just won a free bag of Neutro dog treats and a bag of Neutro food. We'll put your, we'll put your name here at the, uh, positively, uh, at the uh, Petland of Iowa City store. Do you know where that's located at? Oh, yeah. I was just there, and she has allergies, so I just bought a product that worked fabulous for uh, her. Oh, what did you get? At Petland. Do you remember what the product um, was? The one that they, yeah, I've got it right here. They recommended it because she was itching with allergies and stuff. And so we couldn't figure out what to do. It's called Nature Vet Aller 911 Hot Spot Foam. Yeah, that's Aller what you just A. featured, isn't it? Yeah, there's a, they have like four or five different Aller 911s for allergy type symptoms to hit. Like she's got hot, uh, Diane right here has a Zoe that has hot spots and it's something that will hit the hot spot and try to soothe it. Great right. as well. Well, Diane, yeah, we're on. It actually works. Oh, that's Excellent. awesome. Well, we're out of time for the show, but you got in just in time, so go pick up your free stuff. And and hey, thanks for listening to the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, we have man. a community calendar to get to, so we got to get out right now. But until next week, this has been the Positivity Petland Show. Good morning. Hello, I'm Audrey Thompson here on AM800 KXIC. Here's today's community calendar for Thursday, September 19th. The community calendar is brought to you by the Parkview Church. The Apostle Paul tells us that bearing one another's burdens fulfills the law of Christ. And therefore, as Jesus cares for so many, we must care for others. Visit Parkview Church this Sunday as they continue their series on word, care,